I walk my patients all the way through. How does the table make space for you? How do we modify things? How does that make it safe and effective so that you feel really comfortable? It's important to make sure that they are heard and that they know the safety factor and the efficacy and what to expect. Often those are the stumbling blocks for people and the barriers to care for them. Welcome to the Journey to Birth podcast. I'm Tristan, the creator of the Natural Birth Compass online childbirth education program. If you've been thinking about seeing a prenatal chiropractor or wondering if it can help you be more comfortable in your pregnancy, then today's special guest will help answer your questions. Dr. Sharon Rose Samalak is a family wellness chiropractor practicing in Seattle, Washington. Her practice is family focused with an emphasis on providing information to help families make informed choices for their healthcare. She is also certified in the Webster Technique, a specialty known for supporting prenatal pelvic health, which she will share more about today. I hope you enjoy this episode of the Journey to Birth podcast. Welcome to the Journey to Birth podcast. Today, I am excited to have a prenatal chiropractor, Dr. Samalak, here with us. She is a family wellness chiropractor who practices in Seattle, Washington. Her practice is family-focused with an emphasis on providing information to help families make informed choices for their health care. She's also a Webster certified chiropractor, which we'll get into today, and loves to work with families from preconception care all the way through becoming grandparents. So welcome on to the Journey to Birth podcast, Dr. Samalak. Thank you for having me. Could you first tell us a little bit about how you got started in chiropractic and how you came to focus on pregnancy and prenatal care and working with families? Absolutely. Uh, I came to chiropractic care pretty young because my mom has seen a chiropractor most of her life for scoliosis, which is a curve in your spine in a direction it's not supposed to go. And my sister and I would go with her to her appointments on, on a regular basis. And we're quite tall girls. And the chiropractor at one point was like, hey, Sherry, your girls are, they're pretty tall. And tall women with a family history of scoliosis have a higher likelihood of having scoliosis. So we should just start looking at their posture. And I think I was probably around seven when he was checking and I'd never been adjusted yet. And he was looking and saw a little bit of curvature happening in my spine. And he mentioned it to my mom, showed her what he was seeing and recommended that I start seeing him regularly to start working on correcting that curvature. And I'm happy to say as an adult, we caught it really early and I don't have any scoliosis and don't deal with a lot of the same issues as my mom. So that was my first ever introduction to chiropractic care and really left a mark on the way that I look at health and my body. So I knew at a pretty young age, most you know, 12 year olds aren't thinking necessarily what they wanna do with their life, but I was like, I think I'm gonna be a chiropractor mom. And she was like, do it, it'll be fun. And so I pursued it and, and eventually graduated uh, with my chiropractic degree. And then it was my last year of chiropractic school, one of my really good friends got pregnant. And she asked me if I would be uh, her birth coach and take the Bradley classes with her because she really wanted a Bradley natural hospital birth. And her husband was living in Philadelphia and we were living in St. Louis. So she wanted someone who could be at all the classes and do everything with her. And going to the classes, I was fascinated by everything that was happening with her body and the birth process and how everything just comes together and how magical preconception and conception and childbirth really is. And ended up working with one of our instructors to learn how to adjust pregnant women with her. And it was a great hands-on experience. I thought I was going to be a sports doctor. I have a master's in sports science and rehab. I was going to work with athletes. I could have sworn it. But being at her birth changed everything and made me realize how much I could use those same skills that I was learning to use with athletes, with pregnant women, and really round out their care and help them to have much more comfortable, much happier, healthier pregnancies on a regular basis. It was a definite light bulb aha moment for me. Yeah, that's funny how that happens. You you think you're on one path and then something just completely changes everything and you kind of 180. Yeah, it's it. crazy to think how like how that moment really was a catalyst for a change in the way that I practice. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are glad to have you here in the prenatal area in Seattle, so that's great. 
So tell us a little bit about how chiropractic helps in pregnancy. In pregnancy, you'll often hear about the word relaxin. And relaxin is a hormone that your body produces to let your joints, especially the joints in your pelvis, be stretchy so that that baby can pass through the birth canal and meet us on the other side. That's the, one of the really big factors that will send women in to see a chiropractor is old injuries, old slips and falls, uh, sports injuries that have been healed and don't bother them at all anymore. When that pelvis starts to relax a little bit, just like relax and tells you it does, and it gets a little stretchier, sometimes those old injuries come up or you, you just kind of shift a little bit easier than you would otherwise. And you end up with some recurrence of an old injury. The spine also goes through a tremendous amount of change during pregnancy. As you can imagine, having a baby in there pulling everything forward, the pregnant person's spine starts to have to shift forward as well, which puts more stress and strain on the tailbone and on the bones in the low back, and even on the ribs as the baby comes way up high and changes the way that we breathe. So those changes don't always happen very gracefully. Sometimes things get a little grumpy and you get some aches and pains and discomfort. And chiropractic is a great way to help step in and guide the body into those new spaces and new motions and allow it to expand and and accommodate the the growing child uh, in a much more comfortable way. How often should somebody be seeing a chiropractor during their pregnancy? And at what points in the pregnancy do you find it to be most important or most effective? It really does vary quite a bit based on someone's history. If someone is coming in and they have no pain and they don't have a a history of big falls or sports injuries or car accidents or anything like that, often a well chiropractic visit for pregnancy will almost follow your traditional OB or midwife schedule where you see about about every three to four weeks in the beginning of pregnancy, ramping up to two to three weeks in the middle to late second trimester. And then the last few weeks, most uh, chiropractors will see patients weekly as the body changes so much more rapidly towards the end of pregnancy. That totally goes out the window when someone has a, a pain issue or a an old injury that, that resurges, like if they have pelvic pain within the sacroiliac joint in the back, or if they get uh, pubic symphysis dysfunction where they have pain right in the very center in the front down low or rib pain, sometimes we'll have to add a few visits in to aid and comfort and, and allow the body to heal a little bit during that process. Can you walk me through what it looks like when somebody who's new to chiropractic and is pregnant comes in to see you for the first time? Oh, absolutely. One of the biggest questions I get when someone first comes in is they look around the room and they see this table in the middle of the room and they go, I'm going to lay on that. Because chiropractic tables are made for you to be able to lay comfortably on your stomach. And when you first look at them, it's not very apparent that you could lay on your stomach on them and, and have a pregnant baby belly. And so the first thing that I usually show patients is how my table changes to allow space so that they can lay comfortably on their stomach and be able to relax and let their muscles along their spine relax during pregnancy. There's tons of different kinds of tables with pieces that some just drop straight down and then we use a pillow to support that has a hole in the middle that allows no pressure to be on the belly. Some tables separate and leave a big open space so that there's space right there. My table has a piece that has a spring in it that I can take all of the tension out and it just gives. So there's a little bit of support, especially with a a supportive pillow, but no pressure anywhere on the belly so that they can lay relaxed. And then we can change how much space that has through the whole pregnancy to make sure that even up to, I think the biggest I've ever had to make my table was for a triplet mama at about 36 weeks. So there's a considerable amount of space that can be made to allow someone to lay comfortably on their tummy throughout the course of their pregnancy. And so that is often a really, the first thing people are like is, oh my gosh, how could I even lay down? Especially because in massage, often you're side lying for a prenatal massage. And so in chiropractic, that doesn't always translate. The second is 
asking about what exactly we'll be doing to adjust the spine. And that's what chiropractors do. We, we do what's called um, create adjustments, which is normalizing the motion and handling the way that the, the body has restrictions in the way that the bones of the spine move. We call it the vertebral subluxation complex. Big words. But in pregnancy, techniques are modified to be very gentle and very, very specific because those ligaments are really loose from that hormone relaxin. So there's lots of different techniques that chiropractors can use. All of them can be modified to be incredibly gentle for pregnancy. I really like to use uh, an instrument called the activator during pregnancy because it lets me be very specific and I don't actually create a thrust with my hands like I would if I were doing a, an adjustment that's more manual. But there are ways to modify those manual adjustments to be very safe and effective as well. I know the tables that can convert to prenatal tables. How much do your prenatal clients love those? <laughs> Being able to lay face down? That is always a big sigh of relief. Isn't they it? love it. <laughs> yes. They're yeah. often like, it's not time to get up, is it? Yep. I can yep. stay for another minute, right? <laughs> it's definitely a treat to just get that different change in position at that after being pregnant for so many weeks or months. You're not supposed to lay flat on your back. You have to lay on your side. You can't sleep how you normally do. So to be able to just lay on your tummy and let everything go is so nice. Yeah, I think also I do a lot of breath work with moms too because they hold so much tension in their stomachs when they're standing up all the time. You know, they're trying to hold their abdomen in and just keep it all tight. And it's really hard to get them to breathe down into their belly. And they're all doing this constricted chest breathing, which probably yes. isn't helping any of their alignment from your perspective. No, those ribs need, need you to breathe. Yeah. So being able to just get in that position really allows the body to relax in a different way, I imagine. Oh gosh, it's it's amazing to see the the shoulders just open up and everything. They often will give a big sigh as soon as they get comfortable on the table. Even just that part of it is just a treat in itself. And <laughs> having somebody who can work all those ligaments, especially in the back when the belly starts yes. growing. Oh yeah. We hear a lot about activators when people start talking about chiropractic. Can you explain a little bit more what those are and how that works? Yeah. So the activator is an impulse tool. Uh, it's an instrument that has a spring in it that allows us to calibrate that spring to the right tension to create a little tiny thrust to the spine that moves that joint in, in a way that lets it release. So it's very targeted. It's a very small movement. The activator itself is, is an instrument and a technique that was developed by a chiropractor named Dr. Fuhr. And he has done a tremendous amount of research behind this particular instrument and how to use the activator to really be specific and effective in adjusting the spine. For people that really want to know a lot more about the activator instrument, you can go to our favorite friend Google and Google activator methods, and they give you a whole bunch of information and access to some of the history of the instrument and how it was developed and the clinical research on the safety of the instrument. It's probably one of the more researched techniques in your practice because it's very measurable. It's a handheld instrument. That's interesting. I've had it done, but I've actually mm -hmm. never seen what it looks like because it's always been on my back. Right. <laughs> so I'll have to go look that up too. And now, a quick word from our sponsor. I want to tell you about two moms and their experience with their childbirth class. They both take a full series of childbirth courses. They both have birth partners who attend those courses. They both learn tools and techniques to manage their labor and birth. But only one of them is actually prepared to help herself during birth. Only one of them is actually confident in her communication tools. And only one of them is actually prepared for the nature of birth. How do I know? I was the mom who took a class, but wasn't prepared to help myself during birth after that class. I was the mom who didn't have the right communication tools. I was the mom who was caught off guard by the nature of birth. And now, because of what I learned from my experiences, my students like Jen and Maria and Susan, who took our online childbirth course, the Natural Birth Compass Program, they are the ones who have the inner confidence and knowledge of birth to help themselves to communicate clearly to their whole birth team. 
to set themselves up for being strong throughout birth and to take control of decision making throughout their birth. Want to know how you can have this level of inner confidence for yourself? Visit us at naturalbirthcompass.com, where you can read how Jen and Maria and Susan used their natural birth compass in their births, and prepare yourself to have the inner confidence you need no matter what path your birth takes. And now, back to your Journey to Birth podcast. What are concerns that people express or come to you with when they're considering adding chiropractic to their prenatal care? Often they're concerned about whether or not the the technique is going to be safe or chiropractic is going to be safe for them. So safety is a really big concern. Whether or not their pain is going to be helped by chiropractic or if they're kind of stuck with it until they deliver that baby. They often are also concerned with especially in pregnancy, how much force we're going to be adding to the body. And so that's one of the reasons I really like the activator during pregnancy. And I also always give a handout to my prenatal patients about the Webster technique that talks about how much force is used and how gentle that technique is as well, because that's the technique where we help balance the pelvis and open up the ligaments to help balance everything. So those are some of the really big concerns that I, I hear from people. And what's great is that there have been some research studies that show that most prenatal patients in chiropractic offices will have at least some relief within a few visits in some of their pain. I think the statistic was between 75 and 84% would experience some relief. And with that also came um, a report of decreased back labor when they were actually um, in the labor process. That's usually a very comforting thing to know that like statistically, if we take away everything else, the numbers are on your side as far as the likelihood of of having some improvement. And that same article talked about having um, relief in in the average was 1.8 visits. So it's not like one of those things that you have to try 20 times before you know if you're gonna have some relief. Most of the time in prenatal, people will see that they're going to have some relief relatively quickly. And then it's just working on changing with the body, which is why you don't just come 1.8 times and it's better and you don't need to come anymore in pregnancy. That's even higher than I would have thought. I'll have to, I'll have to send you the link to, um, to that article. Uh, it's, it's one of the ones that I, I always keep on hand. That's great. That is probably very exciting news for some of our pregnant listeners who are having pain right now. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they'll be scheduling with their prenatal chiropractors. Do you have any myths about chiropractic in general or chiropractic specific to prenatal care that you want to dispel for us? I think that one of the biggest things that I hear all the time, I always like to dispel, is that people tend to think that chiropractic hurts, where sometimes because the joint that we might be working on is very swollen, there might be a little bit of discomfort with with pressure or with movement, but that especially in pregnancy, when all of the techniques are modified to be very gentle, chiropractic is really quite comfortable to have an adjustment is a very comfortable experience. And most people get up feeling very relaxed and, and say, I can't believe I waited this long. The fear factor around whether or not it will hurt to get adjusted, I always like to dispel. And if I think that there's a muscle or an area that's going to be tender, I always tell the person ahead of time, like, hey, I'm going to feel through this area. It, it, there's a little bit of swelling there. It's a little spongy. So this might be tender when I adjust it, but it will be instantaneous. Like the pain would be right when the activator made its click sound and then it should be gone. And that tends to be quite helpful for them to know and to just anticipate what's happening. Yeah, and especially if they get onto more of a regular schedule and mm-hmm. they are hitting this 75 to 84% relief after they've had a couple of treatments, yep. that any bit of small temporary pain in that first adjustment is going to be well worth right, right. the long term. Those little joints, oh, the joints in your spine yeah. are really small. And it's almost like if you had smashed your finger or something and, and it got a little swollen, if you were to really press on it and poke on it, it would hurt a little bit. And so that's what I, I liken it too when I'm thinking about a really swollen joint in the spine. If if you were to even just palpate that, and which means use your hands and press on it, you would feel it to be a little bit tender. But once that joint gets to some movement in it, like if you can move your finger and move some of that swelling around, then it tends to be a lot more comfortable. They're also pretty intricate too, right? So lots of little ligaments causing the pain. Exactly. 
we definitely need to hit upon the Webster technique because that's probably the most well-known prenatal chiropractic technique. Yes, it's like the chiropractic prenatal buzzword. Yes. (laughs) So the Webster technique was developed by, it's called the Webster technique because it was developed by a doctor named Dr. Larry Webster. And what he found was this connection between the sacrum, which is the keystone that holds your pelvis together in the back, and it's a specific subluxation, so a specific way that that tailbone gets restricted in a, in a misalignment of the pelvis and a correlation with how the ligaments of the uterus in pregnancy are involved with that. So in pregnancy, you can think of um, one of my favorite analogies from one of my teachers in school was that you can think of the uterus like a hot air balloon. It's coming up and rising up out of the pelvis, almost like a hot air balloon that's at a balloon glow, where it's sitting on the ground and it's all blown up, but there's ties to it that are holding it to the ground. And those ties are the ligaments that are holding the uterus to the pelvic ring or the bones of the pelvis. And if you think about that, and you think about if you were to twist the pelvis or rotate the pelvis and not let it move how it's supposed to, then that hot air balloon would not have a nice, beautiful shape to it. And the, the, the ties to it would have different stress and strain to them. And that's what often happens in pregnancy because babies put different forces through the uterus and moms have had, had tumbles and falls in their own lives. And so when that sacrum, that tailbone gets restricted, it's more than just a bony misalignment. It actually affects the ligaments throughout the whole pelvis. And so that's what Dr. Larry Webster was looking at. The biggest thing that he was looking at was how do we release that sacrum and balance the ligaments in order to allow mom's pelvis to be in as normal a mechanical position as possible. So I often get asked, doesn't the Webster technique help with babies that are in the wrong position? And what I always try to make sure I'm very clear on is that when I'm working with mom in the Webster technique and releasing her sacrum and releasing some ligaments in her pelvis, we're working on making her pelvis to be the most beautifully round, open home for that baby and that uterus as possible. We're not working on the baby in any way. We're just creating space. And then when there's enough space, the baby has the the room to move into a position that might be more advantageous for them. So one of the big things that that I like to make sure that people understand about the Webster technique. The other thing is that once we get the tailbone to move, whichever technique a chiropractor uses for that, in my office, it's often the activator technique. Some people will use what's called a drop table, lots and lots of different techniques for it. Then we work on balancing the ligaments of the pelvis and ligaments connect bones to bones. And they have a lot of little receptors in them that tell your body where it is in space. So we use a very, very light contact on that so that the body doesn't tighten up around it. You could imagine if you took your finger and you pressed on your own eyelid and at a very like comfortable pressure, that's about as much pressure as is used in the Webster technique to release a ligament. So when we're thinking of uh, the broad ligament or the round ligament in the front when we're actually working on the lower abdomen. It's a very comfortable, very small amount of pressure. It wouldn't even bruise a tomato. So this technique affects the entire pelvis. Mm-hmm. So are you working on specific spots or is it, is it individual from patient to patient? There's a specific analysis that you use, like a, a specific pathway that you think down when you do the Webster technique. The first thing we're always checking is, is the sacrum moving how it should? Is it freely mobile? And so the first step for us is always making sure that that sacrum or tailbone is moving how it should. And then from there, we branch out and start checking on the ligaments. We'll check on the ligaments that connect your sit bone to your tailbone called the sacrotuberous ligament. And that's located on the inside corner of your butt cheek. And once that's all balanced, then we go face up and I use a a wedge pillow so that we're not laying totally flat on your back and we don't have to worry about any issues with blood flow or anything like that. And then we're analyzing the ligaments in the front side of the pelvis, which would be the broad ligament that covers the whole uterus and the round ligament that holds on in the front and working on releasing those and making sure that they're as balanced as possible. So depending on the person and their history and the position of their baby, those ligaments could be very different from person to person as to where they're holding tension. 
Okay, that makes sense. I think I've heard about the Webster technique mostly in reference mm-hmm. to malpositioned babies, but it sounds like this has a much broader range of application mm-hmm. where if somebody was having round ligament pain, even like sciatic right. pain, I Absolutely. mean, I know chiropractic as a whole yeah. modality can affect all of these things, um, mm-hmm. sciatic pain and, and back pain and all that. But somebody who specifically works with this Webster technique is maybe going to have a, a whole another set of tools for- right. I use the same analysis if I had a big burly construction worker come in with a lot of pain that was tailbone pain. I will use the same Webster analysis. Obviously, he doesn't have a broad ligament or round ligaments in the front, but I can still use that analysis for the sacrum and for the ligaments in in his pelvis in the back and make sure that that's balanced. So while it has the side effect of being fantastically useful if someone's baby isn't in a position we want them by like that 34th week of pregnancy, we can still use it to to improve the quality of of life basically during that pregnancy. It does help a lot with round ligament pain, oftentimes with the sciatic discomfort. And and if you think about it, space is a commodity in the pelvis in pregnancy because that baby is just going to continue to grow. The fetus grows through the whole pregnancy, especially in that last trimester when everything switches to growth mode and the baby's putting on weight and finishing up all of its development. By creating this nice open, beautiful space, we're allowing the pelvis to be as relaxed as possible and creating as much comfort as possible, which is really very helpful. We also are always looking with the Webster technique to help make sure that the body is able to handle the change in the stresses that are happening as that baby's weight pulls forward during pregnancy and the tailbone undergoes a different stress. I'll continue to use that same web analysis after the baby is born to make sure that as those ligaments tighten up, that things are going to be coming back in a lovely, symmetrical, beautiful place. Creating as much tension in that pelvis is very helpful so that those joints open up in a really easy way during delivery. Yeah, great. I was going to actually move next into kind of after baby arrives and the postpartum alignment and right. all the changes in the sacrum and the tailbone. So this seems like it's very applicable in that stage as well. Do you apply Absolutely. these same things? When you think about the hormones of pregnancy, relaxin kind of peaks at birth, but it doesn't just disappear right after you have the baby. The ligaments are still quite stretchy. Everything is still quite loose. And continuing to work with the way that those stresses are in the pelvis is, is hugely important, especially because the, the pelvic floor, which are the muscles that are on the bottom of your pelvis that the baby actually has to pass through on their way out, are often um, a little stretched or irritated. And so sometimes I'll co-manage those cases that have a lot of pelvic floor component with a, with a pelvic floor PT to make sure that we're, we're helping mom have the biggest success possible postpartum. You also have to think about how the abdominal muscles, the rectus abdominis and the obliques and the transverse abdominis all get so stretched out during pregnancy. And then all of a sudden there's no baby inside anymore and you're carrying them outside and the stresses are totally different. Now you're also trying to learn how to breastfeed potentially, even bottle feeding, whether it's breast milk or formula is very stressful on the parent's body because holding that baby and holding that bottle very still is a lot of work. So we often refer to that as the fourth trimester. That first few months after having the baby of how your body is getting used to those new stresses and strains, especially because babies get heavier as they grow. Yes, they do. And takes a toll on the the upper and mid back then at that point. (laughs) Oh, new mama neck for sure. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Strong arms though. Oh, absolutely. Can you tell us what are some of the things that your prenatal patients say after they've worked with you? What kinds of things surprise them about the care that they receive when they visit a prenatal chiropractor? I think that one of the biggest things that I hear is that they really appreciate uh, that obviously number one is that they feel better and they get to spend some time laying on their tummy. That's usually like the biggest like aha amazing moment for them. But also that it's not just about getting adjusted. It's just about aligning the pelvis. Um, It's about helping their, their body to cope with the changes that are happening and 
it's about giving them resources and places to look for more information and being a connector in the community so that if I'm recognizing that the work that I'm doing is helping, but I think that massage or pelvic floor PT or any number of modalities like acupuncture are also going to be helpful. I can help connect them with, with those folks in the community as well. And providing information about checking in, about protein content in their diet. And if they're having any, any problems with finding other alternative things to eat, if the, their cravings are driving them bananas. It's about helping them have wellness pregnancy instead of just trying to just get through. Real, helping women realize that they can really appreciate and, and enjoy their pregnancy. And, and hearing the things that they say about, oh my gosh, that article that you gave me was so helpful. Or thank you so much for referring me to that amazing acupuncturist. She was so helpful and so great in answering my questions. Really being able to be a resource seems to be the thing that I, I think kind of comes naturally, but also is surprising because it's so easy to get lost in the weeds in pregnancy and really be so in the experience that you're having that you don't get to necessarily look outside of that as much. I love that wellness pregnancy and giving them the opportunity to really enjoy the time that they are pregnant because it really does go so fast. And yeah. I think a lot of times we tend to focus on the end goal of getting through it and getting through the birth and having the yeah. baby and not as much sitting in the moment of pregnancy. And if you're in pain or discomfort during pregnancy, that's not going to make it an enjoyable experience. Right. And then having, you know, I, th I think you can never have too many people on your prenatal care team. So having- Oh gosh, no. Extra set so of many eyes. resources. Yeah, and yeah, an extra set of eyes, and just making sure that things aren't falling through the cracks because no one provider is going to be able to manage everything for anybody. So I yeah. love that you are kind of looking at it that the bigger team part and helping them try to prevent things before they become a problem, so that they really can get that enjoyment out of their pregnancy. So as someone who knows pregnant bodies on a really high level, what is one of the most important mm -hmm. things that you recommend people do to support a healthy pregnancy and birth? If I had to pick only one thing that I wish that every family who was deciding that they wanted to have a baby could know, they really should start with preconception, which means the time when you're even thinking about whether or not you would like to have a child. Because so much comes in those months before you actually conceive, whichever method you end up conceiving with, whether it's working on improving your fitness level so that you have some good strong musculature in your core activation and in your, in your glutes and in your legs so that you, you don't feel deconditioned in pregnancy and can do more working out through the pregnancy or working on your frappuccino habit so that you can transition to something that's a little bit less sugary and a little less caffeine maybe during the pregnancy. But really taking the bird's eye view and recognizing that you have resources in that time when you're even just thinking about it and really making this an intentional process so that you can enjoy it a whole lot more. But for people that are beyond that and that are pregnant, I think one of the most important things that I could tell parents is to keep moving. That the movement, whether it's exercise or chiropractic or prenatal yoga or PT, that just actually using your body helps to keep it looser and helps to keep it healthier and in alignment. That old phrase that we always hear, move it or lose it, is very, very true in your body that you have to continue to move. And, and you know, as a chiropractor, I'm a little biased. I think that every joint needs to have normal range of motion and be able to move with as much integrity as possible. Finding that five minutes in the day where you can do some stretches or some exercises or go for a walk, and especially if you can do that with your partner, is such a valuable thing. So I would say those are my two things. would be either to, to really take that bird's eye view and look at the idea of preconception and then if you're beyond that and you're in it and you're pregnant right now is to really just focus on movement. Thank you for bringing that preconception piece. We're getting more awareness of that as we move forward in understanding pregnancy health and health with babies, how much things like epigenetics and that early programming of the egg and the sperm and how right. those are contributing to the health 
of a baby and that's all set before conception even happens. I can't remember when the week is, but there, at some point, if you are pregnant, a pregnant person and you're having a baby girl, all of the eggs that she will ever have are in your body and you're carrying two generations under your heart. And yes. that to me is, is beautiful, but it also speaks to how early that whole process can start in that what we are, what we put into our bodies and how we think and how we move. And so it's so important to look at that and how you can affect in your own body by, by choosing to be peaceful and taking time to be calm and meditate each day. If you have a stressful job and connecting with your baby and telling them, I know we've been stressed out today, but we're taking this five minutes to be calm and I'm going to sit here with you and relax. That, even that can be so impactful during pregnancy. Yeah, it definitely can. And increasing people's awareness of really how important that is, is really important. And then joints moving or getting that, that daily movement in for those who are already pregnant or even preconception, of course, this applies yeah. as well. But I don't necessarily think you're coming from a bias because you're a chiropractor. <laughs> I think that's, you know, that's exactly as nature intended. We have two legs for a reason so that right. we can get out there and move and experience nature and the world around us as well as part of that too. Mm -hmm. So great pieces of advice. Let's just say one more thing um, is that with the Webster technique and, and for people who really want to know more about prenatal chiropractic and pediatric chiropractic, the International Chiropractic Pediatric Association their website has a lot of information and it has a search function where wherever you are in the country, you can put in your zip code and it will pull up a list of doctors who are certified in the Webster technique. So that if you don't know a friend or a friend of a friend who really loves their chiropractor, who is, is working with the Webster technique in pregnancy, you can at least be confident that there's a certifying body that makes sure that people are trained in the, in the Webster technique and you have a way to search for them. And you can just Google ICPA, standing for the International Chiropractic Pediatric Association, and you'll find their website and you just click the find a chiropractor and they will help you find a prenatal chiropractor in your area that is qualified to work with pregnant women. Great. Thank you for sharing that. And for those people who are in Seattle area, how can they go about finding you if they want to reach out to you? I uh, My practice is in Fremont. I'm just a block away from the Fremont Troll. So I'm easy to access as far as neighborhood wise because there's a lot of routes to Fremont. You can check out my website, which is seedoflifechiro.com. And you can call or shoot me an email. And even if you just want a copy of uh, my newsletter about the Webster technique that has some articles and some research on it, or you just would like a little additional information, I'm always happy to continue to work with women and families and providers and help them better understand how chiropractic could benefit their lives. Great. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with us today and sharing this wealth of information about prenatal chiropractic and the Webster technique. So we all know a little bit more about how that works and supports women during their pregnancies and beyond. Thank you. Thank you for listening and being open to new perspectives as we spent this time together. You can find Dr. Samalak at seedoflifechiro.com or for those local to Seattle, you can find her in her office in Fremont. I will put her information in the show notes so you can check out her services and get on her email list for some great prenatal health info. As always, let me know how I can support your journey. If you have topics you want to hear about, guests you'd like to hear from, questions or comments to share, let me know. This podcast is always transforming, and you can help shape it into something that helps thousands of families have the best pregnancy, birth, and transition into parenthood possible by leaving a comment or a review, or sharing this podcast with others in your life who will benefit from our discussions. Find me on the socials at Natural Birth Compass, or email me at info at naturalbirthcompass.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode. Wishing you a wonderful journey to birth.